Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at K-nearest neighbor for classification with Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So with K-nearest neighbors, you are trying to predict an unknown observation based on the observations that are around it. You know, this is mapped in like a multi-dimensional space. So let's just say I have this guy here. I don't know what he is. I'm curious. Put a question mark inside there. But I know this guy, I know this guy, and I know this guy. And so by knowing the, 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 the classification for the neighbors around him, I can infer that what he, he is also. So that's kind of how this works out. And so normally it's like a voting system. So if I have two votes here, let's say this is like a yes or a no. So this guy's a yes, this guy's a yes, and this guy's a no. Well, if my K is three, so I'm looking at three neighbors. Well, I have two yeses and I have one no. So I'm going to assume the guy in the middle here is also a yes as an example of how this works. Now we can make it more complicated by looking at the mathematics and all the things behind that behind the algorithm, but we're going to leave it at that because we're more focused on learning how to use Python rather than learning about the mechanics of the algorithm and the mathematics that's involved with it. So what we're going to do is, is that we're going to try to classify whether, you know, people voted or not based on um, the, da the data set that we're using here. That's what we're using or that's what we're doing. Excuse me. So you can see right here in this first uh, block or first cell here that we have our code here. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Of course, we're going to be using Pi data set. That's where our, our, our data is coming from. We're going to import pandas uh, model selection here from um, SK Learn for splitting our data. Uh, the, the line number four is where we get our, our classifier from that algorithm. And then line number five is when we're looking at, you know, the output when we evaluate our model. Now for the actual preparation, it's pretty simple for this video. There's not a whole lot that we need to do to prepare it, except to of course load our data set and separate the independent from the dependent variables. If you want more details about the variables involved, you can always look them up by uh, typing, by using data, and then you just uh, type in the, the argument show docs equals true, and you can learn more about the variables involved. But our data set is turnout. This is right here in line one, and we're gonna save this in an object called df. And then for our independent variables, we're going to, of course, only have three. We can make it longer, but we don't want to. Age, their education level and income. And then lastly, the dependent variable is, of course, vote. And just for fun, we'll take a quick look at the data set so you can see it in line number four. So you can see right here, this is the data set. So, you know, we got age, education, income, and uh, whether they voted or not. We left out race because you can see race is categorical. I mean, it's possible to use categorical uh, variables, but mm, we don't want to really do that. It's not the best way to approach it. And so we're taking the other three variables as our dependence and we're using vote, our independence and our vote as dependent, excuse me. So that's what we're doing here. And so now we're just going to develop our model. There's no missing data, there's no duplicates, so we can just move forward here. And so we're going to develop our model. We're really close to finishing already. And so you know we gotta do our train test split, and we gotta make an instance of our classification and then actually make our classification model. So in line one, we split our data into train and test. We've done this in many videos by now. So we got an X train and an X test, a Y train and a Y test. And then we use the train test split function to separate things. Test set equal to 0.3 means 30% of our data should be set aside for the test set. And random state equals zero is setting our seed. Then we create an instance of our classification uh, uh, model, if you will, and we're using a K of seven. That means we're going to use the seven closest neighbors to determine the unknown value, what it is, whether it's someone who voted or not. Normally this is always an odd number, you know, because you want to have a simple majority to determine it. And then lastly, we're just going to make an actual instance of our model. So we run this, you, see, you can see the output is not that amazing. Uh, we got to add one more step to it and that's the actual evaluation of it. After this, we will conclude this video. So here in the first line, I 
do a prediction. So I take the, the characteristics of my model and now I use those to predict the unknown values in the, for the X, for the test set for the X value for the uh, independent variables. And then in line two, I, I assess the accuracy and the strength of the model with a simple classification of report, which compares the test set with the predicted set. So I do that and you can see the results for yourself. So in terms of precision recall and the uh, F score, we're pretty good predicting when somebody is a voter. That's not bad for the social sciences. However, we struggle a lot more for determining if somebody is not a voter. Um, again, it, it looks like there's a large number of people who did vote, which made it easier to figure out their behavior compared to people who did not vote. That's the, the difference here. And of course, then down here in terms of accuracy, when we do the weighted all together, you can see again, the numbers are kind of okay for the social sciences when it comes to the weighted uh, ones. And the overall accuracy is not too bad for the social sciences. Again, I don't want to speak for every discipline. So the model is you know, reasonable, uh, but it also depends on what your goals are. If you really want to have a strong idea of who did not vote, maybe you want to try to figure out how to reach them, try to understand maybe why they didn't come out. We're not doing a very good job at predicting people who did not, did not vote uh, using these various metrics here. And so you can see also the same problem here. But for predicting people who did vote, we did an excellent job. So uh, that's how you could go forward with that in the future. So I'm going to just kind of review what we did and then conclude this video. So in this video, what we did was is we learned how to use K nearest neighbor for making a classification for classification purposes using Python. So of course you have to have several modules that you install. You can see those right here. The data preparation for us was very simple this time. Of course, data preparation is not always this easy, but we were fortunate in this particular example. After that, you do your model development right here. Again, it's relatively simple compared to how complex things can be. And then lastly, we had to do our testing here, which indicated the strength of our model. And that was it. So I hope that you, know, you were able to understand and to learn some valuable things here in this video. I wanna thank you for watching. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you so much again for watching and you take care.